Hi everyone, I am Dr. Balamurugan, a junior resident currently pursuing general surgery in Grand Medical College and Sojeji Group of Hospitals, Mumbai. Surgical residency is never complete without spending significant amount of time with this dressing trolley. It is more of an armamentarium, especially for first year residents. But most of us do not actually look into its components and how each of them work due to lack of time or abundant workload. In this video, we are going to learn about the dressing trolley and its ideal components. Even though there are many types of dressing trolleys available, this portable one is widely used in most of the hospital setups. It has two shelves, a waste pan and a biomedical waste bin. Basically, it includes a bin containing sterile dressing materials, gloves and drapes, normal saline, antiseptic solutions, desloping agents and local anesthetic drugs. The lower shelf usually contains instrument tray, suture materials and biomedical waste bin. Now, we will go through in detail about each and every component. The bin has 3 to 4 compartments. Usually, it contains sterile gauze piece, gamji roll and pad, roller bandage. First, the gauze. The name is derived from Gaza, a city in Palestine where people used to wear this fabric initially. It is a thin translucent fabric with loose open weave. Gamji is named after Dr. Joseph Samson Gamji in Birmingham. It consists of a thick layer of cotton wool between two layers of absorbent gauze. It is prepared as both rolls and pads. Roller bandage is a strip of gauze prepared in roll. All these are commonly used in absorptive dressings. These act as a barrier for the wound to prevent contamination from outside. It also removes exudates and prevents maceration as well. There should be both unsterile and sterile gloves. Unsterile disposable gloves are made up of nitrile and it is used for minor procedures like venipuncture and to remove dressings. Sterile gloves are made up of latex. Powdered free gloves are preferred nowadays as it causes less allergic reactions. It is used to apply dressings and while doing bedside procedures which need sterility like gastric catheterization or urinary catheterization. There should be drapes which is placed on the mattress before dressings. Both disposable and reusable drapes are equally effective. It also acts as a barrier between the wound field and patient's own skin flora and other possible sources of microbes. Macintosh sheet was first invented by James Sign, later copied and patented by Charles Macintosh. Traditionally, the material was used as a raincoat. It contains two layers of high quality rubber. High breaking and tearing strength make it more durable to use. Ideally, the dressing mattress should be covered with a Macintosh sheet. It is also waterproof, hence it protects the underlying mattress from getting ruined by the blood or human excreta. It is available in various sizes and various color combinations. There are several adhesives used after the wound is dressed to keep the dressings in place. White adhesive tapes are commonly used and widely available, but it is very sticky, causes discomfort to the patient when you remove it. Micropore tape is made up of porous material. It is permeable to air, so it aerates the skin. It can handle some moisture, but it is not waterproof. It does not adhere strongly and also less irritable. It does not fit properly in areas like between the fingers or toes. You can easily tear it with hands. Transport tape sticks into both dry and wet surface, renders it more versatile to use. It is also waterproof and it is one of the strongest adhesive tape. You can tear it both horizontally and vertically. It leaves some residue when you remove it after some days. Dynaplast is the strongest adhesive. It is actually an elastic adhesive bandage, but mainly used as a sticking to secure vital things like intravenous catheter, gastric catheter, intercostal drainage tube and endotracheal tube. It is very sticky and difficult to remove after a while. Also causes discomfort to the patient when you remove it. Crib bandage is similar to it except it is not adhesive. It is applied above the dressings and in edematous region to reduce the swelling. Now we will move on to the main components which should be on a dressing trolley. Normal saline. It contains 0.9% sodium chloride. Both sodium and chloride are at 154 milli equivalents per liter. It keeps the wound pet for a while and provides moisture. The rationale behind its use in wound dressings is when it gets evaporated from dressings, it becomes hypertonic from isotonic, which draws fluid from the wound into the dressings. This is popularly known as osmotic dressings. Betadine solution. Betadine is the brand name of the most commonly used antiseptic in all parts of the world. It contains polyvinyl pyrrolidin iodine, shortly called as povidone iodine. Here I would like to emphasize on certain terms because most of the residents use these terms interchangeably without realizing the actual meaning. The word sterilization means destroying all microorganisms including spores. Disinfection means destroying all microorganisms except some bacterial spores. Antiseptic is something which is used on our body 
Disinfectant is something which we use it on non-living surface. Iodine is a bactericidal agent and povidone is used as a carrier. This carrier complex releases iodine very slowly. It is effective against both gram positive and gram negative bacteria, viruses and fungi. It also has some sporocytal activity. 10% solution is used in dressings of unhealthy wounds. It is preferred in unhealthy wounds rather than healthy wounds. It is also used in pre-operative skin preparation. The 5% to 7.5% solution is used as a scrub in pre-operative skin preparation. It is recommended to leave it for 10 minutes at least to utilize its maximum action. Hydrogen peroxide is usually available in 3 to 6% solution. It is more effective against gram positive than gram negative bacteria. It also has some sporocidal activity. It mainly acts as an oxidizing agent. Reactive oxygen species generated on degradation oxidizes DNA causing breakage and further damage to cytoskeleton and cell membrane. It also used as a chemostatic agent by activating platelets through cyclooxygenase pathway. It is mainly used as a desloughing agent than as an antiseptic. Sometimes you might have used to remove the blood stain on your clothes. All surgery residents might have come across this incident at some point of time. Have you ever wondered why? It removes blood stain by breaking chromophores. Hypochlorite solution is available in 5 to 10 percent concentration. The famous Dakin solution is nothing but low concentration sodium hypochlorite. Sodium hypochlorite releases hypochlorous ion when it is added with water. This nascent chlorine damages cell membrane of bacteria, viruses and fungi. It is similar to the hypochlorous ion produced inside the phagosome when neutrophil digests bacteria and viruses. It is used as a disinfectant mainly and bleaching agent as well. It should be used in case of chronic unhealthy wounds. Edinburgh University solution famously known as Usol contains chlorinated lime that is calcium hypochlorite and boric acid. The original hypochlorite solution is more alkaline. In order to make it more effective and stable, boric acid was added which produced excellent results. Usol is prepared using 12.5 grams of chlorinated lime and 12.5 grams of boric acid powder added to 1 liter of lukewarm water and this solution is allowed to stand for a while. The filtered solution is used. It is recommended to use this solution within 15 minutes of preparation. The traditional usol bath for chronic unhealthy wounds should last for at least 30 minutes before the debridement and dressings. It is used in chronic unhealthy wounds. Sometimes you might have ruined your colored clothes when you accidentally spill usol on it. Remember, the bleaching property of hypochlorite is the reason behind it. Surgical spirit, it contains 70% ethyl or isopropyl alcohol. It is actually colorless until it is methylated with methyl blue, which is also known as denatured spirit. It is volatile and highly inflammable. It is used as a topical antiseptic. It acts by denaturing the cell wall protein. It is effective against gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, fungi and viruses too. It is used in skin preparation pre-operatively or before intravenous catheterization. Ideally, the spirit should be let air dry on its own. Savlon is the brand name of antiseptic solution which contains chlorhexidine gluconate and citrimide. The main mechanism is positively charged chlorhexidine reacts with negatively charged membrane phospholipids. It is both bactericidal and bacteriostatic apart from preventing biofilm formation. It also kills virus, fungi and spore. It kills 99.99% bacteria within 30 seconds. It is used in pre-operative skin preparation and cleaning the burns wound. Tincture benzoin might be left unused in many trolleys. For those who wonder why it has been kept there is, it is used as an adhesive agent. Tincture means solution in alcohol. It encompasses 80% benzoin, 10% alcohol and 10% other compounds. It is a pungent solution of benzoin resin and ethanol. It is used to provide tackiness and enhance the adhesive property. It is used before application of stoma and dressings near angle of mouth or eyes. Ether Solvent made up of diethyl ether also occupies a corner in the dressing trolley. Ether was used as an inhalational anesthetic agent historically. It is colorless, volatile and inflammable solution. Rarely it is used in surgical debridement. It is mainly used in cleaning and removing sticky dressings nowadays. Turpentine oil It is mainly used in the treatment of wounds infested with maggots. The word turpentine has a root from Latin word teribenthin, a tree which components are used as an antiseptic. Glycerin is a colorless, odorless, viscous liquid. It exhibits dehydration by osmosis. The hygroscopic effect is enhanced with magnesium sulfate. It is used in reducing the inflammation and edema in non-necrotizing inflammatory conditions such as cellulitis and erysipelas. Glycerin-soaked gauze pieces used to reduce edema and stoma 
and prolapsed hemorrhoids. Liquid paraffin is an emollient which means moisturizer. It prevents water loss from skin so that it keeps the skin hydrated. It is used in dry skin, eczema, ichthyosis and pruritus. It is also used as an osmotic laxative when it is ingested. Sometimes it can be used as a lubricant for perirectal examination when the lignocaine jelly is not available. Water rounds are never complete without this wonderful solution named sterilium. It contains 2 propanol, 1 propanol, mesotronium ethyl sulfate. It is a rub in hand disinfectant. It is bactericidal, virucidal, fungicidal, and sporicidal. Now we will move on to the next section ointments and cream. Cadamer is one of the most commonly used ointment in wound management. It contains three dimensional lattices of microspherical polysaccharide beads of cataclysmar iodine with 0.9% elemental iodine loaded into an ointment base of polyethylene glycol and polyxamer. When this polysaccharide beads become wet, it allows slow and sustained release of iodine into the wound bed. It has antimicrobial, desloughing, exudate controlling properties, mainly used in highly exuding, infected, chronic wounds. Debridase contains papain and urea. Papain is a cysteine proteinase enzyme obtained from ripening fruit Carica papaya. Urea acts as a chiotropic agent which means it facilitates the action of papain by solubilizing proteins. It is one of the crucial components used in enzymatic debridement. It digests necrotic tissues by liquefying eschar. It migrates the viable cells from wound edge into the wound cavity. It decreases bacterial burden and exudates. Also increases granulation tissue formation. Betadine ointment contains 10% pupidone iodine ointment. It is used as a topical antiseptic mainly used in minor skin aberrations and wounds. Also used in suture line post surgery. Teabag ointment contains 2% mupirocin. This topical antibiotic is effective against staphylococcal and streptococcal infections. It inhibits bacterial protein and RNA synthesis. Main use agents in superficial skin infection like impetigo, folliculitis. Unlike betadine ointment, it cannot be applied on mucous membrane surfaces like eyes, nose or vagina as it causes irritation. Enzymac is similar to teabag ointment plus it contains bromelain. Bromelain potentiates its action just like urea does it to papain. Placentrec gel 1 gram of ointment contains 0.1 gram of human placental extract. It contains polydeoxyribonucleotide as a major component apart from other vitamins and nutrients. It mainly acts by promoting epidermal keratinocyte proliferation. It also has anti-inflammatory, antioxidative, antiplatelet, neovascularization properties. In addition to it, it has bacteriostatic and fungistatic properties. Main usage in chronic non-healing wounds. One more advantage is it produces very minimal scar. Region D contains recombinant human epidermal growth factor of 150 microgram per gram of ointment. Epidermal growth factor regulates cell proliferation, migration and differentiation through binding to receptor kinases on target cells. Obtained by cloning of EGF polynucleotide which is overexpressed in E. coli. Mainly used in diabetic ulcers, venous ulcers, chronic non-healing wounds. Silver sulfadiesin cream. Silver binds with amino acids, DNA, bacterial walls and interferes with the respiratory chain. It gets released slowly when in contact with sodium chloride containing body fluids. Sulfadiacin is a sulfonamide antibiotic which inhibits dihydroterovite synthase which disrupts folic acid metabolism thereby DNA synthesis. Both has a synergistic effect. Lately, cerium nitrate compound is added to this combination which renders the eschar firm, impermeable and adherent to the wound bed. It is effective against gram-positive, gram-negative bacteria including pseudomonas. It is mainly used in preventing and treating infection in second and third degree burns. Skin discoloration is an adverse effect, particularly in areas exposed to ultraviolet rays. Avoid using it in face and those who have pregnancy or those who are allergic to sulfur drugs. Hydroheal is an amorphous hydrogel in colloid silver. Hydrogel swells up with water, yet it retains three-dimensional shape, helps in better drug delivery to targeted sites. The silver in it acts as an antiseptic. Hydroheal is mainly used in chronic non-healing wound bed sores. Soframycin cream contains 1% framycetin sulfate. It is a topical aminoglycoside. It is bactericidal by inhibiting bacterial protein synthesis. It is used in the infection of skin, nails, hair and external ear. It is also used in superficial burns, scald and burns over the face. 2% lignocaine gel is a topical anesthetic agent. 
It acts by blocking voltage-gated sodium channels in cell membrane of neurons, thereby preventing the depolarization of presynaptic neuronal membrane. This eventually leads to failure to transmit the action potential of pain signals. Besides an anesthetic agent, it is also used as a lubricant while inserting nasogastric tube, urinary catheters, and endoscopes. It is used in perrectal and proctoscopic examination. It is also used in combinations with other medications in the treatment of anal fissures and hemorrhoids. Lignocaine solutions are available as 2% lignocaine hydrochlorate with or without 1 to 100,000 adenylate solution. The amide drug lignocaine is a sodium channel blocker, also used as an antiarrhythmic agent. Addition of adenaline reduces systemic absorption, more volume of infiltration, also reduces bleeding due to vasoconstriction. It is used in regional blocks, local infiltration and minor surgical procedures. Lignocaine spray used to anesthetize the pharynx before endoscopy. The maximum dose that can be given is 3 mg per kilogram without adrenaline or 7 mg per kilogram with adrenaline. Do avoid adrenaline combination in areas with end arteries. Sometimes it is buffered with sodium bicarbonate to enhance the effect in abscesses and to reduce pain. The duration of action is up to an hour. BBVacan vial contains 0.5% BBVacan hydrochloride. It also works by blocking sodium channel. The maximum dose can be given is 2 mg per kilogram without adrenaline, 2.5 mg per kilogram with adrenaline. The action lasts up to 2 to 3 hours. The instrument tray should contain certain instruments which are necessary while debriding, sometimes life saving. The commonly used blades for debridement are number 15, number 21, or number 22. Tooth resecting forceps is helpful in grabbing the necrotic slough, which can be easily debrided with surgical blade. Surgical scoop. This is one of the favorite instruments for most of the surgical trainees. It just scoops all the infected necrotic tissues and unhealthy granulation tissues off the wound bed. In case if there is any uncontrollable bleeding, the figure of its suture should be taken to control the bleeder with the help of the needle holder. Spencerwell's hemostat forceps helps not only in dissecting and grabbing the infected tissues while debridement but also in achieving hemostasis. Scissors should be there to help in cutting the dressing materials, suture materials and stickings. If someone does not use the chattel forceps while doing dressings, there is a good chance that wound might get infected more and more or it might never heal. When a surgeon is gloved during dressings, the assistant staff nurse or the relative should be instructed to use the chattel forceps to deliver the dressing materials. All dressing trolleys should contain at least these three types of suture materials made up of polyglactin, silk and nylon. I strongly recommend all the fellow residents to strictly adhere to the protocols of biomedical waste management. Because if you accidentally throw a needle or a broken ampoule into a red bin or yellow bin, the healthcare worker who segregates it might get hurt. It takes hardly few seconds to take a moment and recall where to throw before discarding the different biomedical wastages. All dressing materials, cottons, wound tissues, face mask, cap, body fluid contaminated stuffs, microbiological waste and expired cytotoxic drugs should go into yellow bin. Syringe without needles, gloves, urine bag, intravenous fluid bottles, IV sets and catheters should reach red bin. Needles, blades, syringes with fixed needles to be discarded in white translucent bin. Glass pieces and metal pieces should be discarded in blue bin. I hope this video is useful. Don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section. Thank you.